Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat 3 Career Mode. I hope you're all uh, having a great day today. I will make it known very uh, early that this episode in the Cup Series race will have no replay cameras due to an issue I had with the game. You won't be able to see the finishing order either. I had this issue at Sonoma back a few seasons ago in the 41 car where I couldn't show any replay cameras uh, unfortunately due to a like black screen in the way. So unfortunately that happened again so we're not going to have any replay cameras in the Cup Series race but we had Noah Gregson in the car and unfortunately for the second race in a row we would have big issues with our Xfinity uh, performance here as Gregson he qualified down in the 20s and as he came through just a few laps later in this race coming through turns one and turns two he would actually hit the wall and cause an incident there as he hits the outside wall pretty hard comes back down into the pack and goes back up into the outside wall really hard and that would take Gregson right out of this race so he would be done for the second uh, race in a row our team DNFs last episode with Jimmy Johnson this episode with Noah Gregson and obviously Jimmy Johnson in the Cup Series uh, in a must-win situation just about if he wants to get inside of the playoffs we were hoping last episode to push Johnson to victory that certainly did not happen unfortunately as he crashed on the final lap of stage one and that took him out of the race entirely but now it's time to set our sights on the Cup Series race like I just said unfortunately no replay cameras for this episode hopefully when we go to New Hampshire in the next one we will be able to have the replay cameras back but Kentucky, a track that we usually do fairly well at. We've struggled a little bit here in the past, but it was a pretty good qualifying lap as it came through turn three, exiting turn four now, heading down the front straightaway, coming through the trial. We would go P4 with a 30.370, so a great qualifying effort for us. So Chase Elliott, our teammate, on the pole, so hopefully we can move forwards here in Kentucky. This week, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series is the Kentucky Speedway for the running of the Quaker State 400. Kentucky is a daunting 1.5 mile asphalt trioval located in Sparta, Kentucky, about 60 miles northeast of Louisville. Now, in 2017, Martin Truex Jr. won his series leading third race of the season here in overtime. He also swept all three stages. He was clearly emerging as the championship favorite after that dominant performance. So will a different driver start to separate themselves from the back here in the Bluegrass State? Well, we're about to find out. NASCAR Racing from Kentucky is coming up next on PRN. All right, we're ready to go green here for the Quaker State 400 at Kentucky Speedway. Matt DiBenedetto has been struggling all weekend. We're going to see if they can turn it around here in tonight's race. Denny Hamlin didn't have a good practice session. They know they can do better, so we'll see what they're capable of tonight. As Kyle Busch failed optical scanning station multiple times, so he is starting in the bag now as it looks like a lot of Toyota issues coming into this race with two JGR drivers and a JGR affiliate now is ready to go green. Chase Elliott on the pole and the green flag is out. Harvick on the front row just in front of us as well. Four wins this season so far between the Hendrick Motorsports driver between myself, Elliott, and Bowman. Elliott with one win, myself with two wins at Martinsville and Sonoma a few episodes ago. Bowman winning last episode as we pushed him to victory. A little bit of contact there with the car on my inside of Jamie McMurray as we went through turns one and turns two, but we hang on to the car as we go down the back straightaway side by side with the two car. Brad Kozlowski, a two-time champion now in the Cup Series as he did win a championship a few seasons back in our career mode. I believe it was when we drove the one car, if I remember correctly, now as you head down down through the trial well, Kozlowski gets clear of me as we would cross the line we would actually be able to get ahead of the four of Kevin Harvick as he came to just another couple laps later on the outside of Kevin Harvick to be exact as Kozlowski was looking to the inside of McMurray to take over the position as Elliott's way out ahead right now as we come through turns one using the outside to our advantage but we get into the wall there as we come through the center of the corner mistake on my part and I could not get off the wall until we got down the straightaway so losing a lot, losing a lot of track position as we went down the back straightaway falling down to 11th behind Kurt Busch but we would quickly start gaining those positions back as we would be able to get past Kurt Busch and Hamlin as we came through now to lap 8 of a 19 in the stage on the back bumper of our teammate of Alex Bowman as there was a car sitting on the inside there and it was Kevin Harvick on the inside wall there. You saw the smoke and he went spinning to the inside wall. No caution would be called and we would get past our teammate of Bowman and run down the 42 of our former teammate Kyle Larson. And there's Harvick still sitting on the air but now there's a car blowing up here on lap 9 as we look to the outside to avoid it and we hit the wall now and we make contact with Chris Buescher and Alex Bowman as there's a crash as we come through the trial and the caution is going to fly. 
a big incident here early in the race that we're caught up in as I moved up to the top to avoid it and unfortunately I was still full throttle and I just drove it right into the wall trying to get past everything and we would still only have one second of damage so we would stay out would still be up here in the top 10 just about now as the green flag is up Busher with the blown engine stayed out he was up along uh, towards the wall though and he would actually stay out of the way for the most part so a bunch of guys do get past him as we go down towards turns one and turns two obviously like I said we have damage on the car uh, not a lot but one second of damage certainly will impact their performance at least a little bit now as we go down the back straightaway side by side with the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. as we go down towards uh, turns three behind Alex Bowman and the 88 they're actually touching the apron as we go into the corner two incidents in this first stage already Kevin Harvick went spinning to the inside wall I'm not sure where he was on the track at this point and as we came through now on lap 14 we had moved up to the top here as we came through battling down the back straightaway making a three wide with Truex and Jamie McMurray as we went down towards turn three trying to get up into the seventh position now as we clear McMurray and we would get past Truex as well and continue to move forwards here now as we came through on lap 18 we had gotten past Alex Bowman but you see Truex he had actually gone back past me so we fell back to P7 still as we came through approaching the final lap now in this first stage of P7 uh, is not a good uh, result compared to how we qualified. I felt like we were at least a top five car, but it's still considering what happened here in this first stage, I was pretty uh, happy with seventh now as we exit turn two, heading down the back straightaway for the final time now in stage one, putting a good gap between myself and teammate Alex Bowman now as we go down into turn three and turn four sliding into the corner, but we do hang on to it now as we come through the center of the corner, exiting turn four, heading down the front straightaway. We're going to come through to finish stage one with a solid seventh place finish, so not bad at all as they're Team Alex Bowman comes through behind us to get P8 and our, un, our other teammate Jimmy Johnson way outside of the top 10 from the looks of it now unfortunately for him Chase Elliott our teammate as well up in P2 as Eric Jones won the stage Eric Jones certainly gaining some momentum here now as he would come to pit road to take two cans of fuel and four tires as well as repair the damage on the car and we would come out in P14 after losing seven positions we had a handful of cars stay out now as we get ready to start the second stage and we're ready to start stage two now in Kentucky as the green flag is back out and we are underway just behind our teammate of Alex Bowman, Kyle Busser and the 18 behind me alongside the 40 of Jamie McMurray, 17 to go here in this uh, second stage. Now as we go down into turns one side by side with the 21 of Menard just about getting into the back now of our teammate of Alex Bowman as we do give him just a light tank to the bumper as we head down the back straightaway. Bush sitting right behind me alongside now the 22 of Joey Logano now as we go down into turn three and turns four McMurray looking to my inside as this outside lane and awful restart whoever's leading obviously like I said uh, some cars did stay out and uh, those were slower cars so they were certainly being in the way now as we come to complete this first lap here in the second stage alongside Ryan Blaney but I decided it's now time to move back up to the top there as we go down into turns one and turns two now it actually hit the wall there on the entrance and damaged the car just a little bit but it really wouldn't be too impacting now as we head down the back straightaway three wide with uh, the two JGR drivers of Bush and uh, Jamie McMurray now as we would get past them as we came through on lap three another lap later looking to the outside still making a bit of a mistake there as we came out of turn four and that would allow Ryan Newman and Kurt Busch to get to my inside as we came through the trial sitting at P17 with 14 to go. Not a good restart for myself so far at the beginning of stage two now as we continue to try and make this outside lane work and as we came through the center of turns one and turn two we hit it pretty good and we would gain a ton of time now as we came to lap five getting back in front of Kurt Busch using this outside lane getting to the outside now of Jamie McMurray as we come through turns one and turns two now putting myself in a top ten position as we would get to the back of Larson and continue moving forward now as we came to lap 8 we had gotten up to P6 and had driven away from all the slower cars and the other drivers that were caught up with the slower cars including Kyle Larson so we had ran down Joey Logano now as there's a car up on the outside wall and that's the 10 of Eric Almarola no caution would be called by Almarola. One of the two drivers left in the playoffs without a win. The other one being Joey Logano. And as it came to two to go on the stage. Now behind this group of cars with Jones, Truex, Logano, and Elliott. Now as we go down towards turns three and turns four. Approaching the final lap here in stage uh, two. You can see I think that might be Brad Kozlowski. That's way out in front right now. As we come through turn three. Looking at the inside of Martin Truex Jr. As we come down through the trial. Crossing the line to take the white flag in stage two. Now side by side with the nine of a Truex. Obviously, we've had a rivalry in the past with him, trying to race him cleanly here with, with throughout this season, as we did have a run-in a while back now as we come up turn two, heading down the back
back straight away for the final time here in the second stage. Elliot sitting P2 right now as he was in the uh, first stage as well. So he certainly it looks like he has a strong car now as he come through turn three and turns four for the final time. We're going to hold off Truex to come through down the front straightaway through the triangle. Elliot second, Logano third, Jones fourth, and we come through to get P5 in the second stage here in Kentucky. And Kozlowski indeed does win stage two to pick up a playoff point now as Kurt Busch rounds out your top ten. Jimmy Johnson and Alex Bowman are two other Hendrick teammates outside of the top ten at the end of the stage as we wouldn't we would once again pit for two cans of fuel and four tires uh, for this pit stop now at the end of stage two as you see Johnson down in 23rd and this pit stop would put us down 16 positions to P21 and it's not really the end of the world. We still have time to get forwards now as the third stage is underway as the green flag waves now. It is about 25 to go as we cross the line. So certainly some time to get up for, uh, towards the front. Maybe a top five. I don't know if we have a winning car right now. As we go down through turns one, Johnson sits just behind me as we sit just behind the 13 of Ty Dillon, giving him a little bit of a shot to the bumper now as we exit turn two on the inside of the 34 of Michael McDowell. Now as we go down the back straightaway, looking at the inside, maybe making a three wide there, but I thought better of it and checked up behind the 13 there as I got onto the apron and got sideways a big mistake on my part there as we come through turn three and turns four and that was the second time this race that's happened where I've kind of gone into the corner and once I got out of the throttle the car just got a little bit loose to where I would drive down onto the apron and thankfully we held onto the car both times but obviously now an opportunity to jump up to the top lane so obviously I'm going to hop on that opportunity as we go down the back straightaway looking to the outside of the 34 of McDowell we would blow right on past him and move back into the top 20 as we came through now on lap 48 continuing to move our way forwards up into P15 looking to the outside of Bubba Wallace and the outside of Denny Hamlin as we went down the back straightaway we would come through to take over the 13th position from Denny Hamlin and just continue to move forwards here as we are hoping that we can still get a top 10 out of this with only 20 to go we certainly have time to get up towards these guys we got up to P12 now in front of Kurt Busch as we came to lap 54 continuing to use this outside lane specifically in turns one and turns two making a three wide with Bowman and the 37 of Chris Busher who blew up earlier and he's still in this race now as we came down in towards turns one and lap 57 Bowman still right around me as we're continuing Continuing to use the outside lane, getting past Jamie McMurray, and we would finally get past McMurray or uh, Bowman and clear him and take over P8 now with just over 10 to go. We would now set our sights on the 21 car of Paul Menard as we came through turns three and turns four now trying to run him down but as we came to about a lap later he had actually pulled away from me a little bit now as we came through turns three and turns four and behind us you can see in the distance a yellow car of Landon Castle smoking and spinning down the racetrack as that might bring out a caution there as we come across the line no caution yet. But as we go down into turns one, the caution gets called now with less than 10 laps to go here in Kentucky with Kozlowski leading the way as we get ready to restart late in Kentucky. And we're ready to go now as we're back underway with less than 10 laps to go sitting P8 now as we have to be aggressive, six laps to be exact as we look to the outside of Truex and Elliott making a three wide as we go down towards turns one, Kozlowski sitting P1, Larson coming through to take over second if he can get ahead of Kyle Busch as he does edge Busch out now as we're three wide with now Logano and still Elliott as we go down the back straightaway and I bank out of it now as I have a chance to get to the bottom going into turn three so obviously I hop on that opportunity as we come through the center of the corner certainly dealing with a little bit of a loose car at this point in the race but it was something that I was able to thankfully deal with now as we come through the triangle crossing the line at this point hitting five to go on the inside of the 22 of Logano trying to take over that fifth position as we went down into turns one you see how big of a slide I get there but we would pass the 22 of Logano as we exited turn two on the back bumper of our team and Abelia getting sideways again as we would get in behind Kyle Busch and Kyle would get to the inside now of Elliott as we came to just a few laps later as we would look to the inside of Elliott going through turns three and turns four trying to take over the fourth position approaching just three laps to go. Side by side with our teammate of Elliott now as we come through the tribal crossing the line to hit three to go. Kozlowski still out front. Larson second now as we go down towards turns one. Elliott hits me in the side and he hits me towards the apron now as we slide through the center of the corner and we hit him again now as we nail him in the left rear intentionally there as we come out of turn two and he hits me again as we hit the wall and go into the wall together and that would take us out of the race. Ten seconds of damage you guys know. Ten seconds is a DNF.
in our career mode. Mr. Hendrick will not be happy with that there as you do see the finishing order. I, like I said, I couldn't show it, sorry. Uh, so you don't see the finish or finishing order, but I can confirm Kyle Larson won the race, but Chase Elliott, we went down towards turns one. Obviously, I would have loved to have been able to show the replay cameras in this episode, but unfortunately we couldn't because of that glitch I had like at Sonoma. But Elliott, I started turning into the corner and Elliott, I guess, just turned harder and hit me in the right side and sideways we went and then we made contact. He got sideways and I'll fully admit I uh, intentionally turned him after he got sideways. I nailed him in the left rear when I hit the wall. I, I full on meant to do that, unfortunately for him. And I don't usually intentionally wreck people, especially a teammate. But like I said, it just kind of, the frustration got the better of me on that one because it was our teammate of Elliot. He drove into the side of me. I didn't go up because if you watch it back slow-mo, you could see my car starting to turn into the corner before we made the contact. He turned into me uh, from what I felt. And he once he got sideways, I took full advantage and I just went to turn him. Unfortunately, he came back up the track into me. We collided into the wall and we had 10 seconds of damage. And when we have more than 10 seconds, we consider it or can, when we hit 10 seconds or more, we consider it a DNF in our career mode. So, unfortunate for us, we kind of let the frustrations get the better of me on that one. Uh, but uh, certainly Mr. Hendrick will not be happy with that. But as always, if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. In the next episode, we go to New Hampshire, where we've had some pretty good success in the past. So hopefully we can uh, not get hit by our teammate of Elliot in the side and almost wreck me uh, to the point where we do end up wrecking. And hopefully we can come out of there with a potential victory. It's, like I said, a track that we usually run pretty good at. So I'm expecting good things there. So like I said, thank you for watching, everybody. So I will see you guys in the next one. Let me know your thoughts. Maybe should I should I have intentionally wrecked Elliot? I don't know. I think that it was just one of those frustration things. He hit me in the side and I wasn't taking it there. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you for watching everybody and have yourselves a great day.